Hi, I'm Olivier. And I'm Rosé. And you're listening to Olivier and Rosé, the podcast where two girls get drunk and watch movies that Katie, that's me, has never seen. Katie, what movie did we watch today? Groundhog Day. Katie, what movie did we watch today? Groundhog Day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I literally thought you were like, you, that wasn't good. Do <laughs> that wasn't again. good. Do it again. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. <laughs> Laugh at my jokes. Um, to be honest with you, my plot summary is pretty close. Alrighty. Well, like Katie said, we watched Groundhog Day. It was released in 1993. The runtime is an hour and 41 minutes. It was directed by Harold Ramis. Ramis. I never looked this shit up. I feel like I Whatever. should. Whatever. Whatever. It was written by Danny Rubin, who did the screenplay and the story, and then also Harold Ramis did the screenplay as well. The main cast is obviously Bill Murray, who plays Phil Connors, Andy McDowell, who plays Rita, Chris Elliott, who plays Larry, Stephen Tobolowski, who plays Ned, Mm -hmm. and Brian Doyle Murray, who plays Buster. Which one's Buster? Um, the guy who, the guy who does, like, the, who actually brings the groundhog out and, like, reads the thing. From Christmas Vacation. Yeah. Bill Murray's older brother. I didn't know that they were brothers. Things that you learn. Alright, so Katie, do you want to tell us what you thought Groundhog Day was about? Full disclosure, I have more of an idea of what Groundhog Day was about based off of, like, just pop culture references. um, More so than I usually do. So, this is going to be kind of similar, but I had to, like, think a little more outside the box because I don't really know the storyline but honestly I kind of feel like I'm pretty close (laughs) even with my embellishments okay Groundhog Day this movie is about a magical groundhog that makes eye contact with Bill Murray and he lives every day over again in order to continue living his life he has to murder the groundhog that did this to him but that's an issue because Punk Sunny Phil lives under high security. Also, it's super annoying to have to start over every single day to try to kill this little fucker. I mean, there's details in there that you got right. Right. Like, he does kill. Yeah, he does kill Phil. Phil. And himself, who is also Phil. Yeah. So, like. But that's not necessarily how he has to get out of the plot. No. Or out of the cycle, I should say. No. So, though Katie was correct. This plot summary that I'm going to give is obviously a little longer. <laughs> a little more detailed and more accurate. Yep, just a tiny bit. Sounds like all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, on February 1st, a news crew consisting of Phil, Rita, and Larry travel to Punxsutawney, PA to report on whether the famous groundhog, Punxsutawney Phil, will see his shadow. Mm. I made a note because I was trying to anticipate your questions. Yes. This is an old Pennsylvania Dutch tradition. Okay. That started Perfect. in 1887. Okay. If the groundhog sees his shadow, there will be six more weeks of winter. If he does not, spring will come early. Right. Also, data from the Storm Facts Almanac shows that Punxsutawney Phil has been right only about 39% of the time. Really? Yep. So, how do they even decide? Oh, fuck no, dude. I didn't get like, that far into it. They definitely don't consult the almanac. No. Hmm. Yeah, I was trying to anticipate your questions, so... <laughs> that was actually one of my questions. I'm like, how the fuck does this even start? <clears throat> it's an old Pennsylvania Dutch tradition. Mm-hmm. So, the next day... So, they get into Punxsutawney on the 1st. The next day, Phil begrudgingly does his, like, Groundhog Day report. And he's very sarcastic. And it's all during the festival and the parade. He tries to leave, but a snowstorm comes through that he said would miss them. And they get stuck in Punxsutawney. Typical weatherman. Typical weatherman getting the weather wrong. (laughs) So Phil wakes up the next day and finds that it's February 2nd all over again. So he, like, wakes up. The same song is playing on the radio. It's Mm. I Got You, Babe by Mm. Sunny and Cher. So that, it and it's always at 6 a.m. that that pops in and plays on the radio. He's able to adjust his actions, but everyone else does and says the same thing and doesn't realize what's happening. This continues to happen over... And over and over again. He seems trapped in an endless loop. Endless loop. Endless loop. So after trying to, like, figure out a rational way to get out of this, like, he tries to tell Rita, he tries to just kind of live it as it was before. 
he realizes that he can't get out of it. So he finds out that his actions don't have consequences, mm -hmm. and he does what anyone would do and goes fucking wild. Fuck wild. Fuck wild. He seduces different women. He drives drunk. He steals money. But he always, always is continuing to try to seduce Frida. Right. He goes on the <clears throat> same, like, date with her, and every time he messes up, like, he'll be like, oh, I'll have this. And she's like, I'll have this drink. And mm -hmm. so the next time he's like, I'll have this drink. And then he's like, let's cheers to the groundhog. And she goes, oh, I always cheers to world peace. So then the next time, say cheers to world peace. So fucking dumb. Yeah, this is the 90s. <clears throat> Whatever. Who cheers to that? So he always tries to seduce her, and it doesn't work. He gets slapped at the end of the night almost every time. Mm -hmm. He starts to dread his existence. And he tries to break the loop by stealing the groundhog. <laughs> and he drives off a cliff and does what, Katie? Kills the groundhog and himself. Kills the groundhog and himself. So, I'm kind of right. A little bit. He did kill the groundhog. Yeah. However, yeah. that doesn't work. Yeah. So, the movie gets a little dark. <laughs> <laughs> and he starts to kill himself a lot. Yes. He jumps off a building. He gets in the bath and throws a toaster in. Which... Can I just say the funniest part is that the fact that there's it still actual has a toast. Toast, toast in it. Yeah, like you didn't need to do that. <laughs> he just takes it, the toast is still in it, puts it down, and it's bread at that point. Yeah. <laughs> it's also, so those are the only ones we see, but he also mentions to Rita, like, oh, I've been hung, shot, stabbed, so we know that he's yeah. done this a bunch of times. As the movie goes on, he realizes that he's in love with Rita, mm -hmm. which I think he kind of realizes early in the movie, but <clears> doesn't admit to himself. Right. Because one of, like, the first things we see is when he's hooking up with that, I don't know, that, like, dumb girl. Yeah. And he says Rita's name. Mm -hmm. And that's early. Right. But he realizes that he is in love with Rita, so he spends more and more time with her. He, like I said, learns more about her mm -hmm. and continues to tell her that he is living in a loop. Yes. And she's like, oh, well, maybe, you know, you have to be better. Like, that's, maybe that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So he ends up going through the town each day and trying to save people after he sees an old homeless man mm -hmm. die. And when he brings him to the nurse, he gets, or to the doctor, he gets frustrated because she's like, you know, some people just die. Right. And he's like, not today, not on my day. Mm -hmm. So he goes, he like saves a kid who falls from a tree, apparently a kid that never says thank you. A little but dick. No matter what he does, he can't prevent this man's death. So the movie never says how long Phil is stuck in the loop, but based on the skills he's able to learn, French, jazz, piano, sculpt ice, we assume it's a long time. Yeah. He also says at one point when they're like, when him and Rita are flipping cards into a hat, yeah. she's like, it would take me years to learn this. And he's like, nope, six months, four to five hours a day. <laughs> so that's dark. Phil at least has been there for six months, which I can understand why he's killed himself that many times. Yeah. So eventually... Phil changes from an inconsiderate, egocentric man into a caring, kind-hearted man. He's able to befriend everyone in the town over one day based on everything that he has learned about them. He's also able to get Rita to fall in love with him. Yep. At the celebration of, like, the groundhog, mm -hmm. Phil gives a speech that's so good mm -hmm. that all the other news reporters don't even talk. They just put their microphones to him. Yeah. And then he goes to, the, like, the dance that we've never seen before. So after this dance, Rita buys him for $300. They go back to his hotel room, and he's woken up by Rita's arm, like, coming over his chest. Mm -hmm. Which means that the loop is over. Yay! And he can finally leave. Talk to Tawny. However, him and Rita go outside, and he's like, let's live here. The end. This is such a weird concept of a movie. Mm -hmm. I'll get into it later, but I just feel like it's so odd. I'm gonna get right into... Um, my favorite time. Katie, what time is it? Give me the fun facts! Exactly. Because I already mentioned how Phil thinks that, or says that he's there for at least six months. Yeah. And in the movie, if you count, there are exactly 38 different days portrayed in the movie. Mm -hmm. Which is totally insignificant. Right. But we just see 38 days. Right. However, according to Danny Rubin, who shares screenwriting credit, in the original, the original script... The time frame was supposed to be ambiguous, and the studio was like, nope, I don't care, reduce it to two weeks. However, the director tried to leave the time frame loop ambiguous, and how many times Connor relives February 2nd 
but it is strongly speculated to be at least 10 years. Oh, God. Honestly, it would take me 10 years to, like, be well, that, nice again. He, but not even, yes, but not even <laughs> being nice. Like, he learns to ice sculpt. He learns yeah, piano. True. He learns French. Like, And he literally has, like, all the time in the world to do all that stuff. And he knows everything about everyone in the town. Yeah, that makes sense. So. 10 years would be a... 10 years. I mean, I guess it says something for the fact that, like, He's still trying to win over Rita after 10 years. Yeah. Which means that he must actually love her. (laughs) Yep. True. The scene where, like, he picks up the alarm clock and slams it on the floor, it didn't break like they needed it to, so the crew just kind of hit it with a hammer to actually break it. Yeah. And it still plays the song. Mm -hmm. Because it actually still played the song. Right. Like, they smashed it, and it still played the song. It wasn't added in in post. Bill Murray and Harold Ramis have both been... Honorary Grand Marshals for the Punxsutawney Phil really? celebrations. That's so funny. Right? Was this filmed in Punxsutawney? No, it was filmed in Woodstock, Illinois. Oh. So, one of the things that happens continuously is Bill Murray steps in that puddle. Yes. So, in the town of Woodstock, there's a plaque on the sidewalk where he steps off of the sidewalk, and it says, Movie Groundhog Day, 1992, presented by... Chuck Peterson and family, and there's just a little footprint that says, Bill Murray stepped here. That's so funny. So there's a little plaque on the sidewalk. That's cute. And I mentioned multiple times how I thought the groundhog was fucking cute. Yeah. It's actually a family of groundhogs. They raised an entire family of groundhogs (gasps) for this movie. (laughs) That's so cute. Can you imagine? I don't know. I'm just picturing them all, like, talking to each other, but I know that doesn't happen. (laughs) Just talk to each other in their groundhog, la- groundhog language. We're yeah. a movie. Groundhoggies. I'm pretty sure that's what they said. <laughs> so the last fun fact I have mm-hmm. is, I actually have two, but one's less of a fun fact, is that Premiere, which we've talked about a couple times, has voted this movie as one of the 50 greatest comedies of all time. Hmm. Does which, it? We don't know the rank. No, I don't. I never look it up. It's okay. I mean... There's a lot of fucking comedy movies, so if it's in the 50s. Yeah. But, and then the last actual fun fact is just a list of, like, shows and movies that use this Groundhog Day trope. Mm. Because obviously, like, you'll see things and you're like, oh, they're having, like, a Groundhog Day. Yeah. And so I, a lot of things do it, but I tried to pick things that were, like, big, right. even if I haven't seen most of them. Yeah. So one of them, the first one that I saw when I looked it up was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Had a Mm -hmm. Groundhog Day episode. There's an episode of Stargate SG-1 that does it, which is good. Mm -hmm. Doctor Who does it a couple times. Charmed did it. Supernatural did it. That's where I saw it. I was going to say, there's that that very famous gif of the younger one. The one who played played Dean in Gilmore Girls, so he must be Sam, right? Yeah. Okay. Where he's like, yesterday was Tuesday, right? But today's Tuesday, too. (laughs) And then there's a lot of movies that kind of copy this. The most yeah. recent one, which I haven't seen, but I really want to because now they're making a second one, is mm-hmm. Happy Death Day. I don't know if you saw uh, that trailer with that like college girl who dies on her birthday. Kind of. I know I've seen it. I just don't really remember it right now. It looks really funny, and I really want to see oh, it. Oh, is it supposed to be funny? I think so. Oh. It's supposed to be like a funny horror movie. Yeah. Whatever. Like but, Scream? Like, Scream is not supposed to be funny. It's not? No. I'm pretty sure. Because they, like, make fun of, well, it's like, they make they, fun like, of Yeah, they talk about movies. all the scary movie tropes. Okay. I mean, and there are some things that are funny yes. in it. Yes. I just don't think it's, like, marketed as a comedy. It's supposed to be, like, like a parody of, no, it's not even. Mm-mm. What's that? Scary movie. I know, but, like, what's that, like, word? Is it satire? I think so. Or they're, like, making fun of something else. Yep. But, like, it's still, I don't know. Don't yeah. quote me on this. So basically there's just like this trope is m- used a lot. And yes. everything I read that was basically like, yeah, before Groundhog Day, if this happened, which it did rarely, it was just like, oh, it's a time loop episode. Yeah. But after Groundhog Day, it started to happen a lot more and it's not really referred to as a time loop episode. It's referred to as a Groundhog Day yeah. episode. That's so. how I know of like the concept of this movie. Yeah. Basically, it's because I used to watch Supernatural like it was my job. <laughs> and that happened. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's it. But yeah, you said that it was a weird concept for a movie. 
It is weird. Like, I don't know. I feel like it. there's nothing ever that says, like, why it's happening or why it stops. I'm assuming it's... It's because, like, he actually is, like, a nicer person. That's not, true. Like, a nicer person. But I don't know. I feel like there's something that you usually, like, will kind of explain it in the background. Like, like a Freaky Friday moment. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like a lot of the times this happens is in some kind of, like, sci-fi or like supernatural show. Yeah, like, magical. That, yeah, something, they have to actually accomplish something to get it right. to fix. This one just fixes. Yeah, it just, like, happens for no reason. Like, oh, he's just a good guy now? Okay. Yeah. But. No, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. But that's probably because this is one of, like, the very first movies that does those kinds of things. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, so, like, anything beyond that, like, anything that copies this concept, they probably have done. Or, like, I know that they've done something where it's like, oh, it's explained because of this. Yeah. That's true. No, it was, it was funny because I was reading the song that plays at the end, the, like, feels like falling in love, I think it was, almost like being in love, mm-hmm. is from the musical Brigadoon, mm-hmm. and they were like, oh yeah, Brigadoon, which has a similar theme to this, but Brigadoon is about, like, two tourists who find a Scottish town that, like, shows up once every hundred years, Oh, and everyone's the same age, but, like... It's not like they're stuck in a loop. Right. It's just like once every hundred years it shows up. Yeah. I, uh, I don't really... And I was like, that's not really a similar... But okay. Well, whatever. Whatever you say, internet. Yeah. It's not like they're, it shows up and they're reliving the same day that it, they did a hundred years ago. Exactly. Basically. It might be. Who knows? And actually, I think I might have told you about this the other day. This was when my sister was home for Christmas. We were talking about it. My best friend's like older sister was in this when... She was in high school, mm-hmm. and we had a home video of it. And at the very end, like the, the guy and the girl that are in love leave, and it's super sad. And so everyone in the theater, you can hear like, like of people sniffling, and yeah. this little boy goes, "I'm sad too." <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like it was recorded on our fucking 1990s like yeah. recorder, and it was That's just so hilarious. Funny. Sometimes kids are really fucking funny and they make me laugh a lot and I like them. And sometimes they annoy the <laughs> shit out of me. And I'm like, how do you not slap these little fucks? How do you not slap them? <sighs> Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> Can you come back to me? I just need to center myself. It's time for Fuck, Mary Kill. Okay. This one has a short cast list. Yes. So. I've been trying, I was trying to think about it while I was watching the movie. Okay. Bill Murray, Phil Connors, Andy McDowell, Rita. Chris Elliott, Larry, Stephen Tobolowski, Tobolowski, whatever, Ned, and Brian Doyle, Murray, Buster. Mm-hmm. So, Phil Connors, fuck, Mary kill. Um, I might fuck him. Right? Yeah. I mean, he's had 10 years of experience on top of his <laughs> life already. I know. I just feel like, definitely not in the beginning, but like towards the end... I liked him a little more because he was just, like, not a complete douchebag. But at the same time, he hates everyone in the beginning, and I feel like I relate to that a lot. Also, like, if we were in this experience of Groundhog Day, we're (laughs) at the beginning of the movie when Mm -hmm. he's like, blah, 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 from, like, 12th grade class? Yeah. I'm like, I totally would fucking fall for that. Someone could come up to me and tell me that they were in my class in high school, and I'd be like, yeah! (laughs) <laughs> also, like, his character, like, progression throughout the movie is probably how I would handle it. Like, yeah. I'd be like, what the fuck? And then I'd be like, I can do whatever I want. And then <laughs> I'd be like, okay, I'm over this. I'm going to kill myself. And then I don't know if I'd ever be nice, but maybe. Who knows? Because some of those people were fucking annoying. Rita. Mm, I'd probably just fuck her, too. She kind of annoys me. Yeah. And that, like, vest that she wears, woof. Yeah. It's so nice. It's it hurts. rough. It's so bad. I'm just like, that was never okay. Like, it looks like you made it yourself. I just... But it used to be, like, a thing. I know, because I wore them. <laughs> <laughs> Little baby one-year-old Katie, two-year-old <laughs> yeah. Katie, just like... Yep. No, like, in elementary school, I'm pretty sure my, <laughs> my mother dressed me in 
vests every once in a while. You know, when I wanted to look good. <laughs> For school photos. Oh my god, yes. There's definitely a school photo of me in a vest. I don't know why. Why that trend ever came. But I'm glad it left. <laughs> and I hope it never comes back. Never come back. Um, Larry. <laughs> Larry the, uh, the cable guy. Larry the cable guy. I like literally. Larry the, ca- the meant cable to say guy. the camera guy, but my <laughs> mouth was like, no, that's not what we yes. say. Larry the the camera guy. Yes. Kill him. I don't like him. Yeah, he's annoying. Yeah. Weird and creepy. Oh my god, it's like one of he's like what's his name from Armageddon? Mm-hmm. That creepy guy. <laughs> Connor just texted me. What? You're gonna love this. Does he ask me if he can come down? Can I bring more wine to you guys? What? He's so nice. <laughs> Find a man like that, ladies. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what's his name from Armageddon? Steve Buscemi? Yes. He's just like a creepy fucker that I'm like, why have you still let him into movies? Like, <laughs> I just don't get, like, all the things you hear about. It's like, it's so tough to break into Hollywood. Like, you have to be perfect, blah, 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 blah. And then they let these ugly little fucks come inside, <laughs> and, like, they just become the weird ones. I guess that every movie needs, like, a creepy weirdo. Or not every movie, but some do. And, like, that's fine. But, I don't know. It's just so odd to me. All right. Uh, next person. Ned. Kill him. Yeah. Dead. Hate him. Phil. So fucking Phil annoying. Phil Connors. He's so <laughs> annoying. <laughs> I would have reacted the exact same way that Phil Connors reacts to him. By being like, like, especially the time when he was like, is that you? And then he like punches him in the face. Oh God, I lived for that moment. I loved the last one though, where he like hugs him and he's like rubbing his back. And he's like, I really missed you. Like, I don't know where you're going, but you can, can you call in sick? And he's like, ah, I have to go. (laughs) That's so perfect. All right. And then the last person I really just threw on here because he was Bill Murray's brother, but uh, Mm -hmm. Buster. Buster. I don't really know too much about him, to yeah. be honest with I, you. When I was reading the cast back, I was like, I kind of want to take him off. I'll probably just kill him. Okay. I haven't married anyone. It's true. I'm either here for a night, yeah, fuck, or you're fuck, dead. Kill, kill. Is who? Yeah, fuck, it's fuck, what you kill, did. kill. Probably Meh. just kill him. Yep. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't know him. <laughs> I don't know you! <sighs> That's my gunshot noise. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. That's more accurate. That's a like a, a blaster noise. Less yeah. gun, more more yes. laser blaster. Yes. More comic booky written out. Pew pew. Pew pew. Bang bang. <laughs> <laughs> and we got off topic. <laughs> what? I guess we should do your rating, huh? Okay. <sighs> the I... face that Rose makes when she's thinking about what I'm gonna <laughs> rate it is the best ever. I think you're gonna give it an A. It's all right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And we're back in the game. <laughs> I will rate this movie an. Eh, it's all right. Yeah. I feel like it's very on the cusp of a fuck no, though. Yeah, <laughs> I could see that. I feel like it's definitely something like you have to watch because it is so immersed in like pop culture, and everyone like in their mother has like copied it in some way form or fashion Mm -hmm. like it's just like it's a thing when you are living the same thing over again people are like what is this groundhog day that stuff like i don't know which is good to like have seen it it's a classic it's a hashtag classic but it's just it's so weird it was just longer than i remembered it yeah it was long and i was like like, we get it a lot yeah yeah i do like bill murray um and i think he's funny but yeah, this was just like way too long. And I was like, can we like move on? Yeah, I when I was writing the notes and even I know that one hour and 41 is a lot shorter than a lot of the other ones we've done. But I wrote an hour and 41 minutes and I was like, really? It seems longer than that. Like, that, it seems like a long movie to just be like, I'm reliving the same day. Maybe it's because the pop culture that does it usually does it in like a half hour or one hour episode that i'm so used to it being like super quick wrapped up yeah yeah i know it was just like jesus christ like how long is this guy reliving the same fucking day over and over again i get why he killed himself get it 
<laughs> just to like stop the day <laughs> be, like shorter Fuck. i don't know if that's worse i feel like that's worse because then it basically just like i'm sure he just sorry he has like less time in between like the living of the day and then waking yeah. up again but it's a very interesting concept that he had to be like become a good person for him to to stop the day to stop the day and like to live his life more like what kind of weird fucking moral compass is this like what i just feel like it's so odd that's why it bothers me that like nothing's ever really said like even like not necessarily being like a narrator but like a lot of times you see things like happen in the background that the actual characters don't know about. Yeah. And you're like, as you're like, you're, oh, that. Right. I just want to know. What would do you, you do if chocolate? this happened to you? Sure. Um, I thought about that a lot during this movie, what I would do if this happened to me. Yeah. And probably, honestly, the same exact thing. First of all, exactly what Bill Murray does, probably like day two, where he's like, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. Also, I'd try to leave Puxitani. Yeah. Not to stop the, like, well, yes, to stop True. the loop, but not even, I would just be like, I need to get out of here, like. Right, right away. Yeah. Not waiting for the blizzard to come. Maybe Puxitani is, like, in the middle of nowhere. Which, also, there was, like, a bit of a, um, what's it called? Plot hole? Mm-hmm. Remember? Kara was like, isn't it supposed to be a blizzard right now it's like at night on one of the loops yeah there's multiple loops where he's out in the middle of the night and there's yeah, no snow exactly and i'm like but then there's multiple loops where he's with rita and they're like building a snowman yeah so i don't know how, like how long it took them like but you can tell like when in the very first um groundhog day day that it's during the day that they're leaving try to get out of there so it definitely happened the blizzard started when it was daytime i lie uh there's no getting out of punxatani it's in the fucking middle of nowhere oh god is that like the bermuda triangle of america <laughs> so there's the gobbler's, gobbler's knob. knob also that's the funniest fucking thing ever <laughs> that's the funniest name ever gobbler's knob gobble knob but yeah there's punxatani it's like legit on the edge of punxatani Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's like smack dab in the fucking middle of Pennsylvania. Ew. So you're just gonna get out. If you go up, you're just gonna get into, like, western New York. Gross. Basically, I take that back, because I can never get out of Punxsutawney. I probably just get fucked up every day, to be honest. Right? I would try a lot of drugs. Yeah! I'd be like, no consequences? All right. Yeah, I would totally <laughs> try drugs. I'm just like, what would happen? Because I'm way too much of a pussy to ever try drugs. I would also get my hair cut in every way that I've ever yes. wanted to get my hair cut. And like, rock a shaved head for yep. one day. Be like, I wonder what oh. this looks like. Oh, it's fine. It'll be normal tomorrow. So true. <laughs> oh my god, this is so great. I kind of wish it could happen for a little bit. <laughs> but like, I need an off button because, to be honest... I would probably eventually kill myself. And I don't think I could ever be that nice, so. I also feel like it doesn't it doesn't show it a lot, but in the movie I feel like he does his thing every, like the report every day. Yeah. Nope, fuck that. I'd quit work right. immediately. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh my god, that would be so funny just to like tell people exactly how <sighs> I feel about them. <laughs> <laughs> no consequences. <laughs> so like, hey, uh um... I would steal a car. I would be like, I don't know. I'd take a piss on my desk. Yep. I don't know why. <laughs> that would be really hard, actually. I don't, know why I'd do that. I don't have a penis anymore. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> no, I would, like, steal a car, yeah. rob a bank. Yeah. God. Oh my god, anything. Anything, just what would you do if there was no consequences? And depending on, like, how I were, what point of my life, like, if I was single, I would totally, like, be like, hitting on, like, very hot men or something that, like, I had no chance with. <laughs> like, that you had just, like, no... Shot with. Yeah. Or, like, I don't know, if I was, like, more of a little pussy and I just had a crush on someone. Or, like, yeah, like, any of your friends that you ever were like, hey, I wonder what would happen. Mm -hmm. Yep. It would happen. Oh yeah, it'd be so weird. If it was, like, now, honestly, I guess it would depend on what day it was. Hopefully I wouldn't be in Punxsutawney. If it was, like... <laughs> I would, and I would also hope it would be, like, a weekend, so I could, like, not have to work. <laughs> but, again, I definitely would eat everything and anything, just, yep. like, in the movie. Yep. Um, I don't know. Probably just get high off whippets and 
I have to whip it. <laughs> the thing. I would eat all of the, um, what's it called, whipped cream, and then I would just get high off of it afterwards. Whipped cream just would taste better. I would get, like, real it. long nails. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, like ah! the ones that you, like, can't do anything with. Like the Family Guy episode? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> just get really long nails. What would I do? I don't even know. I would just like show up to work naked and just be like, what's up? Hey, how are you? And see who reacted in what way. Yeah. Oh, man. I do whatever I want. Whatever I want. And to be honest, whatever I want is usually just sitting down watching TV. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I'd probably just watch every, like, every TV yeah, show. Just... I'd binge every series. Yeah. <laughs> be mad that there wasn't any new episodes coming out. Oh my god, that would be so <laughs> sad. Yeah, I'd probably watch things that, like, the series had ended. But, like, I've always been like, I'd like to see that. Watch the entirety of The Sopranos. Yeah, basically. Because I've never seen an episode. It's a Wonderful Life. Mm-hmm. Or A Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful It's life. a Wonderful Life. About how, like, if anyone ever came up to me and was like, this is happening, like, I would totally believe them. Yeah. Like, if someone was like, I'm reliving the same day over and over again, I'd be like, oh my god, let's figure out a way to get this out of, like, a way, like, get you out of this loop. Like, I would totally, I don't know, I would believe. I'd be like, okay. Anyone. That sucks. Today, no consequences day. Yeah. Tomorrow, you tell me again and we'll fix it. Yeah, And if exactly. I say no consequences day, say we already had it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh my god, that's so funny. But, yeah. Which, I feel like in movie world or, like, movie land, there's, like, it's almost as if it's, like, an alternate world mm -hmm. that they're doing this because, yeah, it's, like, an alternate universe where they've never seen any movie or any TV show that everyone in real life has yeah. seen. So, me being, like, I think maybe, like, nowadays, sometimes they, like, reference things that have actually happened in real life, even though they're playing a character. But, like, that's why I feel like I would just be like, oh, I've seen movies before, like, I know what happens. Cool, I've you're seen doing Groundhog Friday. Day? Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> you I switch bodies with your mom? Yeah. Let's fix it. I would totally believe someone. I would never be like, this is so weird. I don't understand. Like, no, I've definitely seen way too much TV. I know that this can be real. What would you guys do if you were stuck in Groundhog Day? I mean, I think we gave some pretty bomb ass suggestions. <laughs> we gave great ideas. Let us know. Yeah. On Instagram or Twitter. Comment. Or our email or the website, which has a link to all those things. Just talk to us. Or not iTunes. Face, not face to face, though. Yeah, we don't. Ah! We do a podcast for a reason. Yeah. We don't want to see people. <laughs> no. Listen, people on SoundCloud. I know you listen. Please go review us. I hear you. You hear me on iTunes, or follow us on Instagram. We just want to interact via social media because we're antisocial weirdos. Antisocial weirdos. I know that this is technically still January, so it's kind of the end of uh, Bruce Willis month, and this isn't a Bruce Willis movie, but I did say for the past two weeks that we weren't going to do one because Groundhog Day is actually this Saturday, Yes. so we did this this week. Yeah, it's very fitting. And then next week... Oh yeah, what's next week? I don't know, but if you have suggestions... Yeah. Whether or not we've put them on our list or not, we'll still take them. Yeah, I've said multiple times that we have a lot of movies, but we will take any suggestion you have. Right. If Katie hasn't seen it, or if I haven't seen it and Katie has. Yeah. That's rare. Yeah, but I would love to see you try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> try to guess it. Try. Try me, bitch. Yeah. But yeah, anyways, uh, next week we'll do a movie that I'll figure out that will entertain katie mm -hmm. and you can listen to us then it will be the first episode of february yeah welcome to the second month of 2019 the shortest month the shortest month of the year Alrighty. well <laughs> we have hot chocolate so we have to go now yeah. because we have to enjoy this we have to enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> But catch us 
next week yes. for another movie. Let us know what you think so far, and let us know what you would do on your Groundhog Day. Yes. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Olivier Rose Pod. You can also email us at Olivier Rose Pod at gmail.com. Our website is Olivier Rose Pod dot Squarespace dot com. And on that website is links to the Twitter, Instagram, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, all those places. There's also a little uh, contact us tab that you can fill in the box and tell us what you think, and it will go straight to our email if you really don't want to email us. There's also a Patreon tab, and we have a different, a few different levels on Patreon. If you would like to donate, that would be awesome. I did put up a special video on there, so if you want to check that out, you're going to have to be a Patreon member. So let us know. Yeah. Anyways, thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I just want to add in that the shout out this week for answering the clues correctly first on Movie Monday on our Instagram goes to M. Krim. Great job, girl. You got the clues right. You got them done first. If you want a personal shout out and maybe a song from me, <laughs> I know I'm good, then follow us on Instagram and watch for the clues that I put up on Monday and maybe you'll get a shout out if you answer them first. Who knows? Probably.